Hey, I just want to let you know that this video is part of a larger course called Operating Systems 101 on CyberTrainingPro.com. So if you enjoy the content, you want to see the rest of the course, or you want to see other courses that we have or our career services, make sure to check out CyberTrainingPro.com. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. All right, let's get started. In this video, we're gonna talk about users and groups within the Windows operating system. One of the most basic ways of having users on Windows systems is by having local users. There's two different ways that you can manage local accounts on a Windows system. The first way is if you go to the start menu and you type lusermgr.msc and hit return. This is the graphical user interface tool or the GUI. The second way is to go to the start menu and open up a command prompt window and use the net user command. And I've included both of these options on the screen. Windows has something called UAC or user account control that you might have seen before. This is a special protection that newer Windows operating systems have, and you're likely to see this if you tell your computer to run something as administrator. Now to use the net user command to create or modify accounts, you have to open up a command prompt window as administrator. So if we go to the start menu and we start typing in command prompt, you'll see there is this run as administrator privilege. So if we click that, that will initiate user account control and we have to hit yes here. Now this window is running as administrator. Let's walk through some different net user commands here. So first of all, if I type net user slash question mark, that is going to be a help command. So that's gonna give me some brief information on how to use the command. If I type net help user, that's going to give me even more specific and detailed information on how to use the command. If I wanna add a user, I can type net user, the username, and slash add. Now that added a user account called John, it doesn't have a password associated to it. If I want to actually associate a password to a new account, I can type net user, John1, provide the password, and then slash add. Now John1 has a password of password. That's not very secure though, because that shows the password on the screen. If I type net user, the username, so John2, an asterisk, and then slash add, this will prompt me to enter in the password for that username. So if I start typing in the password, it's gonna ask me to confirm it. Now I've created John2 with a password that you can't see on the screen. That's a lot more secure. On the screen, I've listed the commands that we just ran. So in the example commands that we just ran, we had a user account of John where we didn't add the password to that account. So how do we set the password for that user account? Well, we can use the net user, the account name or the username, and then specify the password. Now the password is set for the user account John. As we just pointed out though, that's not a very secure way to do it because the password is shown on the screen. So we can actually type net user, the username, and then an asterisk, and that will prompt us for the password again. Now we've changed the password. You can see on the screen the commands that we just ran. Now what happens if we wanna delete a user? Well, we can type net user, the username, slash delete. That deletes the user account. What if we wanna disable a user account? Well, we can type net user, the account name, slash active, colon, no. That is going to disable that account. What if we wanna enable that account now? Well, we can type net user, the account name, slash active, colon, yes. Now that account is enabled. On the screen are the commands that we just ran. Another important command for user management is the net accounts command. This updates the user accounts database and modifies passwords and login requirements for all accounts. So if I type net accounts, this is gonna give us a whole bunch of information that applies to accounts on this system. You can see there's a whole bunch of different settings that we can set for accounts. So first of all, the force log off command is the number of minutes before a user is forced to log off. The default value is to never force a user to log off. The minpwlen command sets the minimum password length and it can be anywhere from zero to 14 characters. Six characters is a default setting. 
Max P wage is the maximum number of days that a password's valid, anywhere from one day to 999 days. The default value is unlimited, so there's no expiration. Now a key point here is this value can't be less than the min P wage value. The min P wage value is the minimum number of days that must pass before a user can change their password after it's set. Now this value can be anywhere from zero to 999 days, with zero meaning that it can be changed right away. This value can't be more than the max P wage value. Unique PW means the password has to be different from the previous number of passwords. So for example, if we wanted to say that you can't reuse one of the last 10 passwords that you've used, the maximum value is 24. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At CyberTrainingPro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. Users on the Windows operating system are placed into groups where permissions can be assigned. Overall, groups make permissions easier to manage because we can just add or remove users from a group to gain permissions. From a security perspective, we never want to apply permissions directly to a user account if we can avoid it. By default, Windows comes with several built-in groups, but there's a few that we need to specifically touch on for this conversation. The administrators group allows users to perform any action they want, including modifying the kernel. The network configuration operators group allows users to modify a computer's network settings like IP addresses, DNS settings, and the gateway. And the users group is essential for user accounts to perform 99% of their activities. Let's talk about the administrators group a little bit more. The administrators group allows full access to the system. One of the problems with administrator accounts is that if they get compromised, the malware or attacker can do whatever they want. For example, they can disable security controls or anti-malware software. A common issue that we see with administrator groups or admin level privileges is that these users might do their daily activities with these accounts. This is a huge no-no and should be prevented at all costs. Only use administrator accounts for activities that require that level of access. The net local group command is used to view and modify groups and group memberships. If we use the net local group users, which is the group, this will give us more information about that group so we can see the different users that are in here. If we wanna create a group, we can use the net local group, give the group a name, so we'll call it testers slash add. That created a local group called testers. If we type net local group testers, give it an account name, so we'll give it John and slash add, that will add John to that group. You can see here, this is the group that we just created. Now, if we do net local group testers, we'll see that John is a member of that group. I've gone ahead and provided the commands on the screen here. Now, what if we want to remove a user from a group? Well, we can do the net local group, give the group name, give the username, and then slash Dell. Now, if we do net local group testers, we'll see there are no members in here. John has been removed. If we wanna delete that group altogether, we can type net local group, give the group name, slash Dell. Now, if we do net local group to list all the groups, we'll see that testers is no longer in here. I've gone ahead and provided these commands on the screen, as well as a command to do this on a domain, which is basically like an enterprise network. In the context of security and restricting permissions with least privilege, we wanna minimize the amount of privileges that users have to only what they need to perform their job. In Windows, we have something called run as, where if you take an executable, so for instance, like Microsoft Edge, and I right click that, I have this run as administrator command, so I can run that as an administrator. 
This means that users can be logged in as their low privilege user account with no special permissions for normal tasks, and then they can elevate their abilities with a more powerful account when they need to. This prevents users from constantly logging in with their elevated permissions account and introducing more risk in our networks. It's alarming how common it is for too many people to end up in the administrators group at companies. This could be due to laziness or even just due to the politics of the organization, but it does happen. In Windows Vista, Microsoft introduced User Account Controller or UAC. When UAC is enabled, permissions are stripped from the administrators of the machine when their access tokens are created. This means that even as an administrator, the user runs applications as a standard user. When a process requires administrative access, it's going to prompt the user for credentials before granting the request. <laughs>